Hi everyone, Belinda here from Belinda's DIYs. Today I'm going to be creating 10 kitchen decor ideas for you and these are made with Dollar Tree items. So let's go ahead and get right to it. These are the items that I'll be using for this first kitchen idea. Okay, so I used one organizer basket from Cooking Concepts, and this is the larger basket that Dollar Tree carries. And I also used two of these command hooks that Dollar Tree had a while back, and these are in the two pound weight. Depending how many cups and how heavy they are, that would determine how much pound you want your hooks to hold. I spray painted my basket with this Rust-Oleum metallic paint and primer in the color Oil Rubbed Bronze. And the reason I did that is because my cabinets are chocolate brown, so I wanted it to go with my cabinets. So that's why I chose this color. A while back I did a DIY using some wire baskets and I took off the chains because I didn't need them and with them came some hooks. Well I used those hooks to hook on my cups and put them underneath and I'll just show you in a little bit. You can use any type of hooks. You can use some S hooks. I'm going to go ahead and show you where I placed my coffee cup holder and I placed it underneath this area. Why? Because this is kind of like my coffee station area here. I have my Keurig. I have this coffee little station. But as you can see, it's like my little coffee bar, my coffee station. So I just thought that putting these cups here would be appropriate. I love to have access to my coffee cup early in the morning. Let me go ahead and show you underneath my cabinet and how I place the command hooks, which way I put them in order to hold this basket. So let me go ahead and show you. So here are the command hooks where I just placed them, one going one direction and one going the other direction. Okay, here it goes. Let me see if I can explain this without confusing you and myself. What I did is I put one of the hooks and then I hooked on my basket. While I held my basket, I put the other hook and then I hooked on the basket. And I made sure that it was stretched enough to where it was holding the basket in place and it wouldn't be too loose. The basket does move some. It does have some movement, but it's not really bad. And then here are the hooks. These are the hooks that were from that wire garden basket that I purchased at the Dollar Tree. You can purchase some S hooks that are probably shorter if you want your cups to be a little bit closer to the basket. But I thought that these worked fine. If you happen to have these hooks, you can use them. If not, you can get them in any hardware store. This basket could probably hold another cup. It's only for my husband and I. I just thought these two would just be fine. You can also add an additional basket and you can make it as long as you want and add as many hooks and cups as you desire. I think by hanging my coffee cups in this area just complements the coffee bar I have going on here. I'm always wanting to add little things here and there to my coffee bar. So I'm hoping that this cup holder inspires you to add it to your coffee bar. These are the items that I'll be using for the second kitchen idea. Two wire baskets, a round one and an oval one, some twine and some chalk clips, a glass vase, a glue gun and also E6000 for permanent hold. The first thing that I'm going to do is spray paint this glass vase and I'll be using this black spray paint by Rust-Oleum 2X Ultra Cover. Okay, so we're gonna be using the oval and the round basket, and the first thing that I'm gonna do is remove the tags. And I'm also gonna remove the handles of both baskets. So I wanted to give these baskets a little bit of a farmhouse touch to it, so I decided to hot glue some of twine around the edge of the baskets. 
Okay, so once I went around a few times with the twine, the next thing that I did is wrap the twine around the rim of both baskets. This is totally optional, but I just wanted to give it just a little bit of a farmhouse touch to it. And this is how both baskets turned out. I'm gonna be using the oval basket as a base for my little two-tier basket. So what I'm gonna do is hot glue and super glue this vase that I spray painted with the black spray paint. So I'm gonna start by adding some E6000 around the rim of the vase and then in the center I'm gonna put some hot glue. And then I'm gonna go ahead and place it in the basket and then I'm gonna add some more E6000 to the top of the vase and then place the basket on top of that. I am going to hold it down for a while until the glue hardens a bit. And so here I'm just bringing you up close just so you can see all the hot glue that I added down on the base. I wanted to make sure that the vase would adhere really, really well onto the basket. And then lastly, I hot glued these little mini chalkboards and then with a the chalk marker, I went ahead and I wrote in coffee and creamer on the other one. And this is how this two-tier coffee and creamer storage turned out. This is perfect if you have limited counter space. These are the items that I'll be using for this third kitchen idea. I'll be using this planter trolley, some wood beads, some wood letters, a pair of these salt and pepper shakers, a plastic tray, a napkin holder, a piece of this wire, and this came from the wire baskets from Dollar Tree, and two of these welcome signs, but I'm only gonna use the handle on both of them. Some white spray paint, and also some Rust-Oleum hammered spray paint and also some black acrylic craft paint, some thick cord twine, and this I purchased at Walmart, but Dollar Tree does carry it. Some needle nose pliers, a glue gun, and also some fix-all adhesive. Okay, so I'm gonna start by tracing out my planter on top of the plastic tray, just like I'm doing so right there. And then I'm gonna cut out the pattern Because the planter has those indentions right there, I'm gonna be placing this plastic over it and then I'm gonna hot glue it just so that I can have a flat surface. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is remove the handle off the welcome sign using my needle nose pliers. It doesn't take much to take it off because the welcome sign is just very flimsy. And then once I do that, I smooth out the edges with my pliers. And I'll be doing the same thing to the other welcome sign. And this is how the ends look once I have smoothed them out. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is attach the handles to the planter. I'm gonna slightly bend them just so they're not so wide. Next, I'm gonna mark off where I'm gonna place them. And I'm going to repeat the same steps, but to the opposite side. Next, I'm going to make holes on the markings using my hot glue gun. You can use a drill, but really the glue gun works well in making holes on plastic. And here I'm just showing you the holes. I tried to make them as small as I could. And this is how the handles will look once I put hot glue and super glue. Okay, so next I'm gonna go and spray paint my planter. And I'm also gonna spray paint my shakers, but first I'm gonna remove the caps. Okay, so while the paint is drying, I'm gonna now work on my napkin holder. And I'm gonna start by removing the sticker that's on it. Okay, so I've placed my wire over the napkin holder. And what I'm gonna do is just trace around it 
As you can see, you can see the napkin holder underneath. And this is how it looks once I've traced it out. And now I'm gonna start to cut it and I'll be making another one just like this. I did have to trim it a few times just to make it fit just right. Next, I'm gonna hot glue it to the panel of the napkin holder and I'll be doing that to the other side as well. One of my viewers suggested for me to use this silicone spatula to prevent any burns and let me tell you this was such a great idea. Thank you so much for your tip. And this is how the napkin holder is looking so far. Okay, so what I've done is added some of that twine all around the edge of the panels and now I'm going to add some more on the base. And this is how it turned out. I did go around twice for the base. Next, I'm going to start painting these wooden letters, the P, the S, and the N. And also, I've strung up these wooded beads onto this pipe cleaner, and now I'm going to start painting all of the items. Okay, so now I'm gonna let them dry for a few hours. Okay, so now my shakers are dry and I really like how they look. I wanted to give them that milk glass effect and I think that I succeeded. Next, I'm gonna hot glue the letters onto my shakers. And this is how the salt and pepper shakers turned out. Next, I'm going to hot glue the end to the napkin holders for napkins. And this is how it turned out. Next, I'm going to add the wooden beads to the handles and I'll be adding three to each one. Okay, so now it's time to add my handles to my planter and I'm just going to add a little bit of super glue and hot glue and then I'm going to insert the handle ends through the holes. And I'm also going to add some hot glue underneath. And this is how the tray looks now with both handles on. And this is how my farmhouse DIYs turned out. One of the things that I really like about this tray is that it has those little wheels underneath and so it turns around really nice and smoothly. Another great place to use this tray is in your spice cabinet or also your pantry. This is a garden item from Dollar Tree. So right now, Dollar Tree has them in stock. So right now is a perfect time to go and hunt them down. These are the items that I'll be using for this fourth kitchen idea. I'll be using four burlap sheets. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is iron out the burlap sheets because they are very wrinkled. So I need to flatten them out since I am gonna be making some placemats with these. And next, all I'm going to do is add some of this ribbon that I had on hand just to border it all around the edge of this mat. And basically, that's all I did. You can take any color of ribbon that you like that goes with your kitchen decor or your table decor. I repeated the same steps to the other three mats.
These are the items that I'll be using for this fifth kitchen idea. I'll be using a organizer basket from Dollar Tree and also uh, two of these glass jar containers, some burlap ribbon, and also some twine, and some of this ribbon here, and also a sanding sponge, a burlap sheet, and also this granite gray acrylic paint, two small mason little jars from Dollar Tree. I'm also going to use this Rust-Oleum 2X cover spray paint in the color Satin Granite. Now what I'm going to be doing is spray painting my organizer basket with it. So what I'm going to do with these jars is create some salt and pepper shakers. So since they don't have any holes up at the top, I am going to be drilling some holes. And this is how they turned out. And now what I'm going to do is remove the lid and then I'm going to paint the jars. And this is how they turned out and I did use the Waverly chalk paint in the color white. Once the paint dried, I did take my sanding block and I started to sand my jars to give them that rustic, distressed look. I'm also going to paint the lids with this black spray paint. I'll be placing these sticker letters over them while I spray paint them. Once the paint dries, I'll remove the sticker letters and I'll have the P for pepper and the S for salt. Next, I'm going to start painting both of the glass jars with the pewter gray. And this is how they turned out and now I'm going to let them dry. Now I didn't show it here, but I did seal them after they dried with a clear coating over them. Once the paint was dry, I went ahead and I also distressed them by using my sanding block. Next, I took a piece of burlap ribbon and I wrapped it around the jars and I hot glued it on the ends. Next, I tied some twine around the center of the jar. Now for the burlap sheet, what I did is iron it out but also cut it to size and added also some ribbon just to embellish it some. This is going to be used as a placemat for my utensil caddy. So I took some ribbon, cut out some strips, and hot glued it on the edge of the mat. Once I placed everything together, this is how my utensil caddy turned out. These are the items that I'll be using for this sixth kitchen idea. For this project, I'm going to be using two of the Cooking Concepts cooling racks and these come in two pieces. So I'll be using two of these, a measuring tape, and I'll be using also this clear finish by Craylon. It's a matte finish. This is a moisture resistant and it dries in minutes. I did a little sketch of how my sink looks. Now my sink sits under the granite, not above. Okay, my sink measures 19 inches in height and 16 and a half inches wide. I am not going to extend the rack beyond the second sink. I'm only gonna cover one of the sinks. I did give it approximately half an inch to overlap onto the granite. Just in case you don't know, these cooling racks come in packs of two and they've got them at the Dollar Tree. Okay, so I'm gonna start by laying out my dish racks as you can see, and I'm gonna have to overlap them. And once I get my measurement of 19 inches vertically, then I'll go ahead and zip tie those together. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other set of two cooling racks. Okay, so there you go. I have all of my zip ties where I have placed them on this first rack. Okay, I'm done with the second one and this is a bit off because the cooling racks are not perfect. Overlap one over the other. I am gonna go now and spray the top and the bottom side with this Craylon matte finish 
protective coating. So I'm gonna go do that and then I'll go ahead and show you how it looks over my sink, okay? I have to say that this dish rack has come in really handy. As you can see, I've used it to place my coffee cups that I used this morning once I washed and rinsed them, as well as some wine glasses. For this next DIY, these are the items that I'll be using. I'll be using this Ninja Blow Dart Shooter. I'll only be using the shooter. I'll be using this box pumpkin decor, a square cake pan. I'll be using this printout of the scale, and this is scaled at 130%. I'll go ahead and link the picture down below. One burner cover from this set, some pieces from this tower game, some spray paint from Rustolian, the 2X Ultra Cover in the color ultra matte white okay so the first thing that i'm going to do is remove the foam from this shooter what i'm going to be doing is inserting one end of the shooter into this pumpkin stand i'm going to be sawing off a piece because i want to shorten it some i ended up cutting four and a half inches okay so i'm ready to glue this into the pumpkin stand but first i'm gonna add some super glue along the side and also on the bottom and i'm also going to add some hot glue once i put the shooter inside i will also be resting it against the pumpkin that way it can adhere well and this is how it looks inside i'll be adding some more hot glue along the sides next i'm going to be hot gluing in two pieces from the tower game and for extra reinforcement, I'll be adding them on the back side of the shooter. And I'll be adding one extra block on top. Next, I'm gonna be adding the burner to the front of the pumpkin and it'll be the top side of the burner to the front side of the pumpkin just like this. I'll be gluing them down with some super glue and some hot glue. And as you can see, the burner lays flat against the pumpkin. That's the reason why I chose this side to glue it down. On the bottom side of my pan, I've made a center marking. Okay, so now I'm ready to attach the pan to the bottom side of the scale. So I'm going to be adding some super glue on the top part of my scale and also to the pan where I've made the marking. And now I'm ready to turn it over and just place it right there on top. I'm going to add some weight and then I'm going to leave it alone until the next day. Okay, so now it's the next day and the glue has already hardened and this is how it looks. Okay, so now I'll be taking it outside and spray painting it with the color white. Okay, from this printout, the next thing that I'm gonna do is cut around the scale. And I'm gonna be placing it in the center of the burner, but first I'm gonna add some Mod Podge to the back of the printout, then smooth it out with my fingers and make sure I get all the bubbles out. And then to seal it off, I'll be brushing some more Mod Podge on the front side. And then once the glue is dry, I'm ready to decorate it. These are the items that I'll be using for this next DIY. I'll be using one metal hanging plant bracket, a one five by seven picture frame, I'll be using an ornament ball marker in the color white. Also some E6000 and my hot glue gun. You're also going to need some needle nose pliers. I'll also be using the chain and hook that these two wind chimes came with. I had purchased these two wind chimes, but I ended up needing to use the chain and the little hook that they came with for this project. And I'll also be using this printout that I printed off my computer. It says Farm Fresh. 
So that is it for the items that I'll be using for this project. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that I want to mention is that I went ahead and I googled farmhouse pictures on my computer and I ended up printing this out. I thought it was appropriate for what I was needing. This fits actually perfect on this five by seven picture frame. As you can see, it fits perfect. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to just remove everything from the picture frame. And I'm also gonna remove the glass. So remove these little metal picture frame holders. So I'm gonna gently just pull them out, just like that. Okay, so now I just have the frame and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hot glue my glass onto my picture. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. And now I'm just gonna press it down just a little bit. Not too much because this glass is just so thin that it can easily break. Okay, now that my glue is set already, what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to lay my picture this way. Just wanna make sure that the lettering is centered on my glass. And this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to tape it down so that it shows through like this. Color it in with my white marker. Basically, that's all that I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna align it to where it looks pretty straight, pretty centered in where I need it to be. I'm gonna get some of this tape and I'm gonna tape it down. And now all I'm gonna do is take my white marker and start outlining and start filling in the letters. That's basically all that I'm gonna do. This is gonna be challenging, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish off outlining all the letters and the pictures, and I'll be right back. This is how it turned out once I removed the picture from the back. Okay, the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to add the little hooks in the back and the chain to the frame. I am gonna be using the chain and the hook from these wind chimes. Using my needle nose pliers, I'm just gonna barely just open it up and remove it and close it back up. Okay, the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to hot glue the chain to the back side of my frame. This is the back side, this is the front side. Okay, so I'm going to be hanging this on my wall. I'm gonna go like this this way. So I want to make sure that I'm going to hang my picture like this. Just like that. So I'm going to lay this flat because it is going to go like this. Just like that. So I'm going to hot glue my chain right about here. It's going to hang about here gonna take my E6000 and I'm gonna put a small amount right where I'm going to place my chain and I'll also be putting some hot glue as well. And I'm gonna hold it there for a bit started to harden already. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the other side.
Okay, now that my chain and everything is adhered to my picture frame, I'm ready to hang it on my hanging bracket. For this next DIY, these are the items that I'll be using. One of these Dollar Tree buckets, some foam board, some letter poster stickers, Waverly chalk paint in white, some black acrylic paint, and this foil aluminum grill topper. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is cut out two round circles and I'll be using my bucket for that. I'm just going to place it over the foam board and then just trace out the circles that I need. This will be the first one. And this will be the second one. Okay, so now I'm going to start cutting out my circles and I'm going to be using my box cutters for that. Okay, so now I have one cut out and now I'm going to cut the second one. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is hot glue both of these two round foam boards because these are going to be used as my lid for my bread box. You could just use one, but I wanted my lid to be pretty sturdy. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is paint this white with my chalk paint. I didn't have any white foam board, so that's why I had to use this black one. So after the first coat of paint dries, I'm going to give it a second coat. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do now is paint the bucket. But the first thing that I'm going to do is just clean it with some glass cleaner just to make sure that it is nice and clean and that way the paint will adhere well. I'm going to let the first coat of paint dry and then I'll give it a second coat. Okay, so now the next thing that I'm going to do is cut along the inside panels of this aluminum foil topper. And when you cut it out, you will have this curved edge and all you have to do is just cut it with your scissors. Once I cut out the pieces that I need, I'm going to start folding the ends inward and that way the edges will be smooth and not sharp. And for the other side, I am going to have to cut it because it does have a harder edge. And I'm going to do the same thing as I did to the other side. I'm going to fold it that way I don't have a sharp edge. I'll have a nice smooth edge. And now I'm going to take the handle of this screwdriver and just run it on top just to smooth it out. And I'll be doing that to both sides. Okay, so here I have the four pieces and I followed the same procedure as the one that I showed you. So what I'm going to do next now is paint them with a white chalk paint. So I'm going to let the first coat dry and then I'm going to give it a second coat of paint. Okay, so the paint on my bucket and on my lid have already dried and this is how they look with two coats of paint. Okay, the next thing that I'm going to do is add the aluminum foil strips around the edge of my lid, as I'm showing you right there. I did have to trim the edge of my lid because it was a bit uneven. Before I hot glue the strip of aluminum, I am just bending it a little bit. Okay, so now I'm ready to start gluing the strip around my lid. And what this does, it just covers up the raw edge of the foam board. And this is how my lid turned out. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do now is add the handle to the top of my lid. And all I'm going to do is use another piece of strip of this aluminum foil. And I'm just going to mold it into the shape of a handle. Okay. 
Okay, now that I'm pretty satisfied how the handle turned out, I'm gonna hot glue it on top of the lid. And this is how it turned out. Okay, now for my bucket, I'm gonna spell the word bread and I'll be using my stickers for that and I'm gonna center it in the front side of my bucket. Once I have my letters just right, then I start to smooth out each letter. Next, I'm gonna brush on some Mod Podge over all the letters. Once I'm done, I'm gonna let it dry for a few hours. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is add some black paint along all the edges and trimmings of this lid. And this is how it turned out. And for the bucket, I'm just gonna add some of that black paint down at the bottom. And this is how it turned out. I also added some spots as if the paint had chipped off from the bucket. And now my bread box is complete and I just placed the lid over it. And this is how it turned out. And these are the items that I'll be using for this last DIY. Four packs of these wooden rulers and two rulers come in a pack. Some nautical rope, some Gorilla wood glue, some giant craft sticks, and these I purchased at Walmart. And these Dollar Tree poster stickers. Okay, so here I've laid out the three packs, and it's like I said, two rulers to a pack, but I am gonna use one from this other pack. So I'll be using seven rulers total. Okay, so I'm gonna start by removing the measurement stickers off the rulers. Okay, so right here I'm just pointing, this is the side where the measurement stickers were at, and what I'm gonna do is turn that side down as I'm doing right there. Next, I'm gonna start aligning all the rulers side by side. Now that they're lined up how I want them, I'm gonna go ahead now and use a square just to make sure they don't move as I start to glue them down. You can use a ruler also, you just need something that'll keep them straight. And all I'm gonna do is just add some glue on the side and then just attach it to the ruler next to it and so forth. I believe this is the first time that I use some glue to attach wood for a DIY and I have to say it was pretty messy. I think that's why I always opt for hot glue. But for this project, I didn't want any hot glue to seep out so I thought this was a better option for this project. Next, I started to wipe off all the excess glue as you see me do right there. It took several of those wipes to take off all that glue. After I removed all that glue, I started to add some of this painter's tape, and this is just so that the wood can stay together until it adheres and dries. And then I carefully turned it over and then removed the glue on the back side as well. And I also added some painter's tape as well. And so this is how the board looks now that I have it all taped up. And now I'm just gonna let the glue dry. Okay, so I let it dry for 24 hours and here is my cutting board looking now. As you can see, that is the back side. You can see the ridges and then this is the front side. It's nice and smooth. Okay, so now I'm gonna start adding the popsicle sticks, but the first thing that I'm gonna do is just mark off the ends according to the width of the cutting board. As you see me do right there, I'm gonna mark off where I need to cut them. And I'll be doing the same thing to another popsicle stick. Okay. 
Okay, so this is how I'm gonna place the first popsicle stick and here I'm just showing you all the holes that the rulers came with. Now what I'm gonna do is just slightly place it over the holes. And for this, I will be using the hot glue. And this is how the cutting board is looking so far. Okay, so now I've taken one of the rulers and I've slipped it in the back side as I'm showing you there. And now I'm just going to hot glue it on the center back side. Okay, so now I'm going to start using the letter stickers and placing them in the center of my cutting board and it's going to spell EAT. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is take some of that nautical rope and just undo it because I just need one of the strands. The nautical rope as is, is too thick to pass through that top hole where the handle is. So once I pass the rope through, I'm just gonna make a knot up at the top. And now I'm just gonna take my scissors and just cut off some of that excess rope. And this is how my cutting board turned out. This is not to really use, this is only for decorative purposes. Well, thank you so much if you stayed to the end. That is it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up and also share and comment, I'd really appreciate it. Until my next video, bye-bye and God bless.